Should I lead you to a business that will save you from a very painful punishment? That's what Allah says. So there are two types of business. One is that which will save you from being uncomfortable on earth by allowing you to earn in terms of material wealth that which may make you buy or purchase the comfort of the world that is very physical and temporary. But the true business is the other business, that which will bring you the contentment of the soul, that which will lead you into eternal bliss, that which will take you to the hereafter, that which will actually open your heart in a way that you taste the coolness and the calmness of the relationship that you have with Allah. And this is why wealth alone has never brought about happiness and contentment to anyone. Some of the most depressed people are those who are extremely wealthy, but they've forgotten Allah. But good news to those whom Allah has blessed with both. May Allah grant us both. Ameen. That was quite a nice loud Ameen. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. May Allah definitely grant us both. We want at the same time the goodness of this world. We want the goodness of the hereafter. One might say, well, that's always correct. But you know, life is such that we become oblivious of our connection with Allah while we're connecting ourselves to the globe and to the comfort and materialism of this world. I need a little bit of comfort. I do. But not compromising my relationship with Allah. I need to earn, but I need to fulfill my salah. I need to go out to work, but I need to make sure that I'm dressed well. And by the way, when we speak about dressing well, it's not just directed to females as some of the men think. It's directed to the males as well. And I'm sure some of you know what I'm talking about. The trends of today, wow. Some of them are okay, but some of them, subhanallah, they leave you showing your designer label on your underwear. Allahu Akbar. May Allah protect us. So we need to direct it to the males as well. Some so tight that even the sisters won't fit into that. Allahu Akbar. May Allah grant us ease. I'm just trying to balance it to say, my beloved brothers who are here, when we talk about dress, don't just say, yeah, tell them, yeah, tell them. You're the guys who stare, by the way. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. But to be more serious, it's actually addressed to all of us, myself included. I also need to be careful how I dress, how I carry myself. When we say dress in Islam, it doesn't just mean what you're putting on, but it includes how you carry yourself. When we talk of hijab, hijab is not just the type of clothing you have externally, but it's a condition that you carry yourself upon. It is a way of life as well. It's part and parcel of your identity. And that would include the men as well as the women. This is why when Allah speaks about lowering of the gaze, He says, Tell the believing males to lower their gazes and protect their chastity or protect their private parts. He starts off by speaking to the males, the males. And the women come only thereafter. There must be a reason. Well, the reason is at times the men need it more than anyone else. But we all need it. Let's be fair. We all need it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness. So the point being raised is when we develop a relationship with Allah and when we earn whatever this world has to offer in a way that we are trying our best to become better as the days pass with our link with Allah rather than going away. As Allah gives you a better job, as Allah gives you a higher salary, as Allah gives you better deals and you earning more, you should become closer to Allah and you should feel it. You should tell yourself, you should be able to tell yourself, I'm a better person today in my link with Allah than I was back in the day or than I was yesterday. And thank Allah for that. 